Portal is by far one of my favorite games of all time. From the first moment I saw it, I immediately fell in love with the story, the characters, and most importantly, with the setting at Aperture Science. So when Portal RTX was announced, I was instantly excited, and now that the game has been out for a while, I want to look into some of the criticism it received, as well as analyze some of the remaster work that was done on the assets. Personally, I thought that Portal RTX was very adequate. There's a lot to be said about performance, and how sometimes it's okay to graphically optimize areas of a game, but I'd like to focus on the look of the game itself. Portal RTX often opted to retcon Portal's style into Portal 2's. There's anything inherently wrong with this decision, but I think it is worth discussing. Portal and Portal 2 have very distinct styles, to the point that you can't really mix the two, and I think that this brings into question of what exactly a remaster is. There's some discourse over this online, but for the purpose of this video, I'm considering a remaster to be an improvement to the audiovisual quality of the original, and a remake to be a complete overhaul. Portal RTX does a really great job with some assets, one of my favorite examples of which is the camera. It's given a great PBR makeover with some extra detail that wasn't there in the original, and you can instantly tell it's the Portal 1 camera, not the Portal 2 camera, which has a completely different design. But the same can't be said about other aspects of the game. Portal's test chambers have a specific feel to them, with the stark concrete walls and cold lighting, but Portal RTX loses this feel by using Portal 2's wall panels instead and warmer lighting. You can see how much of a difference this makes with Flowell RTX, a mod for Portal RTX by a good friend of mine that changes the game to be more faithful to Portal. And it's not necessarily this difference that bothered me the most about the game, it's how inconsistent these decisions were. The style of the chambers was entirely changed, but the BTS sections were remastered beautifully and faithfully. At the same time, you have this weird mix of Portal 2 and Portal 1 styled assets that altogether fail to form some kind of cohesive design language. Having that consistency is important to tie everything together and to make the setting of a game feel immersive. And it's here that, for me, Portal RTX falls apart. To understand this further, I'd like to introduce a list of guidelines that I follow when I'm remastering an asset. Number 1. The design of the remastered object must not interfere with the functionality of the original. Number 2. The remastered object must be visually recognizable as the same object as the original. And 3. The remastered object should fit the original art style. So for the first point, what defines the functionality of the object can really differ. The functionality of a static detail prop, for example, might be to add detail to a scene without drawing too much attention or being distracting. But for a dynamic model that the player interacts with, the functionality could be much more literal. The second point you might be saying to yourself is obvious. Of course it should be the same object. But this is a little more nuanced and will become clear when we take a look at some examples. As for the last point, you'll notice it is a should, not a must. This serves more as a check. If your remaster object does fit back into the original environment, great. But this won't always hold true, especially if the remaster is using new shaders or material systems that weren't available in the original. Now let's take these guidelines and compare some of the Portal RTX assets against them. I've mentioned the camera earlier, so let's start with that as our first example. The functionality of the camera is to track the player around the test chamber it's placed in, and it should draw some attention to itself so the player knows they are being watched. The remastered model accomplishes this with no problem, so we can check that one off. As I mentioned before, it is immediately recognizable as the Portal 1 camera. Portal 1's camera has a very different design from Portal 2, which changes the original to fit with the new design language. Does it fit into the original art style? Well, the truth is that since all of the RTX assets use the PBR shader, they're always going to look out of place among the Portal 1 assets, which do not. But I think that if you set that aside, then yes, this remastered model fits into the original art style. The camera is a great example of a good remaster, not just because it checks all these boxes, but also because it just looks good. That's the thing, we can do these analyses to break down the design of a particular asset, but you can generally make a judgement just by looking at it. There are numerous other good examples as well, the elevator, the portal gun, office assets like the keyboard and chair, pretty much all of BTS, and not to mention the cake. These are all good examples of good, faithful remasters. But then, what constitutes a bad remaster? Uh, the button. This thing haunts me in my sleep, man. Initially, seeing the RTX floor button in the trailer is what immediately made it apparent to me that the primary objective of Portal RTX wasn't to present a true remaster of Portal. It was a tech demo. And that's completely fine, you can absolutely defend any of the design choices that were made behind that fact, but I think that it presents a very interesting case study of, if the goal was to be a true remaster, why some of these choices were flawed. So let's break down the button. Does the design impede functionality? Technically, no, it's a button, there's not much more to it than that. But it's also worth noting that another important functionality of elements in a puzzle game is to aid in the puzzle. I think that there's some merit for another argument where having this shiny and refractive glass top actually distracts from the puzzle. 
Portal and Portal 2 are very careful to guide the player, whether it be the signage, ant lines, tile patterns, or the design of the puzzle elements themselves. But the button in Portal RTX just sticks out like a sore thumb. It's such a strange one-off. We don't see this type of material on any other puzzle elements, nor anywhere else in the facility for that matter. We don't even see it on the pedestal button, which is supposed to mimic the same design as the floor button. It's not recognizable as being the same object. In fact, it uses the Portal 2 design for the button base instead of the one from Portal. You know, the game that this is supposed to be remastering. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with this retcon approach when it's consistent. The floor button is the only puzzle element that got retconned in Portal RTX, and the only asset as a whole other than the wall panels and tiles. There are many community projects out there that remake Portal in Portal 2 style, but it's the consistency in these asset choices that creates scenes that feel cohesive. It feels out of place in Portal RTX even among the other remastered assets, not to mention how it would look back in the original art style. The button seems like it exists solely to showcase the refractive capabilities of NVIDIA Remix, which is probably the reason, and as a result, is probably the worst remastered job in the game. There's one more example I'd like to take a look at, the cube. The design doesn't mess with the functionality, I mean, a cube is a cube, unless of course you made the entire thing glow, but thankfully NVIDIA would never do that. Is it recognizable as the same object? Well, this is where the nuance I mentioned comes in. I would actually say that, no, it isn't. That high contrast aperture logo on the sides is very distinct and is a design feature very unlike that of the Portal 1 cube. And because of that logo, it also wouldn't fit back into the original art style. And you might be saying here that I'm nitpicking, and you wouldn't be wrong, but little details like this add up. I actually like the overall design of the cube. Ironically, we had actually come up with a very similar design for the cube in Catalyst, one of the mods I'm working on that takes place between Portal 1 and Portal 2. With how different their two art styles are, it was important to us to find a sort of middle ground between the two. I'm obviously biased here, but the design decisions were very intentional to that effect, and part of that was the logo on the cube. And here again we see that issue of inconsistency. Why was this asset given this sort of blended design between the styles of the first and second games, but the rest of the assets are either remasters from Portal 1 or retcons from Portal 2? There's seemingly no rhyme or reason to these decisions and results in a very disjointed aperture facility. But even that aside, it doesn't excuse using the logo incorrectly. I feel like with the Aperture logo being such an iconic and recognizable part of the Portal franchise, it's one of those design elements that needs to be treated right. We don't see this kind of logo usage anywhere in Portal 1, so we use it very subtly, reminding the player of who they're at the mercy of, rather than being all they can think about. There are some places in Portal 2 where we get close to this kind of blatant placement, but even then it's rare and generally continues with the idea of using the logo as a subtle branding element. The worst part is that this isn't the only asset that doesn't make correct use of the logo. The Fizzler has this weird version of the logo that I can only assume was someone's attempt to recreate it on their own, where the inner aperture is just way too small and you can instantly tell it's off. To me, this sort of thing is inexcusable. Yeah, it's just a logo, but when you think of Portal, of Aperture, what comes to mind? It's an integral part of Portal's identity, and getting it wrong can only be the result of ignorance, laziness, or both. So you know, what's the takeaway here? I wanted to dive deeper into Portal RTX because giving new life into older games has always been something that I really enjoyed, and I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to. Think about how exciting it was when you were a kid and a game you liked just got a brand new update. It's the same idea. It's why I found myself on three different Portal 2 mod teams, one of which is my own. Portal RTX is a great example of something that I call the remaster fallacy. It's the idea that to remaster something you need to completely change it, that the original wasn't good enough. It's something I often see with community Portal remaster projects. You can replace all the assets with their Portal 2 retcons or port the game to a new engine and lose all the lighting, but in doing so, you also lose all the character of the original game. And this isn't limited to just Portal. The GTA remasters come to mind as a recent example that made the loss of character pretty apparent. I want to show you something I found while making this video. This is the UV map for the floor button in Portal 1. The base of the button and the top are actually separate models, but they share the same texture, so I have both of their UVs here. And this is the base of the button in Portal RTX. And I mean, when you look at this, it's like no wonder they had to use a 4K texture to get a pixel density per island that's still worse than if they had taken their time to properly UV the model and use a 2K texture instead. They literally just went into Blender, hit Smart UV Project, and called it a day. And you might be saying, well, maybe they wanted every island to be unique to not have texture repetition, which, sure, for large visible components like the outer shell and maybe even the feet, I can absolutely get behind. But they didn't even do that! Look at this tiling! And you have to remember, this is just the base of the button. There's a completely separate drop-off for a different 2K texture for just the top of the button as well. 
Not all the models are like this. In fact, most of the ones I checked were fine, but I still can't believe that such an iconic and important hero asset got this kind of treatment. But who cares if a single model needs to load four 4K texture when you can just buy a 4080 for $1,600 and forget about it, right? And this isn't to discredit the modelers that worked on these either. They're all clearly very talented and very capable artists. To me, this suggests the game was rushed more than anything. Is that what it was? A rush to get a tech demo out by the deadline? Maybe we'll never know. But seeing stuff like this is upsetting to me because it just feels like such a wasted opportunity to give such a beloved game a proper remaster and simultaneously demonstrate NVIDIA Remix and what it can do. Especially given the fact that Remix is specifically being pitched as the way to remaster older games. But Portal RTX completely misses the entire point of a remaster. It outright replaces a few things design-wise, like the chamber walls, the button, and the overall lighting. But those few things are enough to completely change the tone and setting of the game. In the end, it's not the same game anymore. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.